So friends, good morning, welcome to this lecture series of uh, geomorphology and uh, today we will continue with this uh, coastal geomorphology again and if you remember our last class, we are talking something about this uh, coastal restoration and this uh, bar barriers. So, we found that the barriers are the product of last 5000 to 6000 years in the late quaternary and uh, the barriers they are mostly made up of sand and uh, the sand it is migrates from its position and uh, with time old barriers are vanished and new barriers are formed and uh, if there is no continuous sand supply to these barriers, so with time some of the barriers will be vanished completely and uh, this coastal sand flats or this uh, sand seats, they are divided into segments of thousands of kilometers long, sorry hundreds kilometers of long and uh, kilometers of width and height of about some meters. And uh, each segment is independent though, but uh, at certain cases there are transitions occur that means sand from one sand seat can be transport to other one at this transition zone. And for each sand sheet, we have source either by this offshore current or it is from this coastal cliff erosion or due to river and they migrate by this littoral currents and due to this wind action or the Eolian action. And finally, where this coastal inlets are there, tidal inlets are there mostly the sand is lost there and it moves towards the deep sea. And uh, there is a the null point which is dividing the sand transportation zone or sand accumulation zone beyond which sand is not transported and again it due to wave action it may comes to the um, coastal zone. And this is all about our the uh, coastal sand management systems. So, today we are going to discuss about this modern coastal conservation techniques because in the last class we are discussing about this uh, complete destroying of these coastal barriers. So, that means we concluded there until unless we allow the sand to renew either due to eolian process, due to fluvial process or the marine process, this coastal barrier will be totally vanished. And it has been noticed that uh, nowadays though these coastal barriers, many of these coastal barriers they were formed during 5000 to 6000 years back, but many of them are getting eroded. This is due to not continuous sand supply. So, now the question arises why the continuous sand supply is not being taken place nowadays which was occurring 5000 to 6000 years back or 10000 years back. So, this is one of this point the, the anthropogenic activities. Nowadays due to developmental projects we are carrying out in vast scale. So, part of this coast we have concretized. So, this due to this concretized that means we are burying this natural sand source so that this sand is not continuously being supplied to the system. That is why this system or these coastal barriers are vanishing. So, the modern coastal conservation techniques that includes calculations of the sand budget for each section of the barrier coast. So, this is important calculation of this sand budgets. So, that means suppose we have a sand sheet in a particular coast. So, how much sand is there, how much sand is in mobile condition, which is in the permanent con condition of below the sea level that is it matters to us. It matters to us how much sand is mobile, that means how much sand is renewing there, it is uh, go going out of this barrier system, it is coming into the barrier system. So, that budget, sand budget, budget has to be calculated. So, with that calculation now we can backtrack it that how much sand we can supply with this much exposure of this coast, how much sand we are producing from the cliff, how much sand we are producing from this river 
and how much sand we are renewing from this uh, offshore currents. So, this total calculation has to be carried out so that we can restore our this uh, sand barriers to larger extent. To correct negative budgets, additional sand is provided at the off current end of the each littoral cell. So, here it is important. So, suppose we are we want to restore the sand uh, this barrier naturally. So, that means we have to supply the sand either artificially or naturally. So, artificial supply of sand it is not feasible to restore the natural systems. So, that in an artificial way we will contribute the sand to this natural system. So, that due to some transportation agent that sand will be contributed naturally to this barriers. So, in this way what we are doing nowadays, we uh, dredge out the sand from this from one point and we put in the littoral current zone. So, that through this natural littoral currents the sand is redistributed and due to this redistribution the sand is automatically coming or supplied to this natural barrier system. So, there are uh, few localities or few points where this uh, modern coastal conservation techniques is applied. First is this communities with these communities which are uh, staying near to the coast. Then the coral reefs, coral reef is one component near to this uh, coast. Then water quality of the coast should be at same as it is. Then protect areas, the area should be protected. Then estuaries and water land that is near to the coast that has to be restored, then historic site that has to be restored. So, that means, these different sites along these coasts that has to be re restored in a natural process. So, that is the main motto of this class today. So, now this quantities of sand, we are talking something about the sand budget of the system. So, this quantity is measured in thousands cube meter per day. So, this quantity has to be measured and can be provided only by dredging out of sand from the ocean floor well to seaward of the null line. Why? Because we know in the last class we are uh, we can remember that the null line or the null point, null point in a profile or null line along this uh, coast parallel to the coast, this is a imaginary line which defines either sand has to move seaward or is to move coastward. So, that null line and we know along this null line there is a breaker zone and then this null line is lying just uh, after the breaking breaker zone where this sand is under suspension condition many times because due to high shearing effect of this waves so breaking effect of this wave with the uh, bottom. So, that means whatever the sand is there we are dredging out sand and we are putting it around this null line well seaward of the null line. So, that the breakers the breaking waves they can migrate this and they can transport those sands towards the coast and can redistribute along this uh, littoral current to this natural barriers. So, the post glacial rise of sea level seems to have frequently generating incipient barriers that were subsequently overstopped and bypassed and are now relict submarine sand ridges. So, what is what does it mean? The post glacial rise of sea level seems to have frequently generated incipient barriers. Why? Because the rise of sea level post glacial, post glacial means we have humid climate, we have warm climate. So, warm and humid climate that means there are number of rivers they are active. So, that the river erosion capacity will be more. So, more sediment contributed from this continent ward and rise of sea level is there. So, that means whatever the sediment was contributing from this river that sediment was not able to go into the deep sea because of this barrier as the water level is increasing. So, that means those sediment remain along this coast or near the, the coast zone and form this bars. So, they are subsequently overstopped and bypassed and are now relict submarine sand ridges. So, nowadays they are somewhat submerged there, submerged 
and they are forming this uh, uh, relict sand ridges. So, relict sand ridges some of them are stabilized sand ridges and uh, some of them they are uh, uh, active nowadays it is eolian activities. So, those coast which are emerged nowadays. So, in that case this uh, sandbars they are being reworked by this eolian system and they are active, but some of these sand ridges they are under submerged conditions and they are the relict one that was formed during this post glacial sea level rise. If these ridges are truly relict and not part of an as yet known modern self sediment transport system, the sand in then can safely be used to restore and mainly modern barriers and other eroding coast. This is important to understand for this coastal management system. Because we have sand ridges which were formed during this post glacial rise of the sea level and they are relict one. For example, if you see this figure here some of these sand ridges you see they are under submergence, they are sub submerged sand ridges are there. So, those sub sand ridges they are not contributing actively to the modern sand ridges. So, that in an effective way we can mine those sand ridges and we can first identify those sand ridges which are in under submerged condition which are not contributing to the modern day sand, sand ridges. So, that we can utilize those unused sand and we can mine those sand and we will put in this zone which is the null area or this null line. So, that this littoral current or the wave and littoral current they can contribute those sand for formation of this modern sand ridges. So, this is an effective way of coastal management system. So, whatever so far we are discussing, we are discussing about this uh, sandy source, how the sand can be managed, how this uh, sand is uh, supplied to the system and uh, how this uh, uh, sand bars or the barriers can be restored naturally or artificially like that. So, now onward we will talk about this uh, muddy coast. So, coast once you move along this coast for example, you take uh, example of Indian east coast or so or west coast the whole coastal system is not sandy. So, some part of this coast are muddy and uh, like this uh, barrier sorry behind the barriers like the lagoons, the mud flats, the tidal flats the great Sundarban delta, the tidal floods, uh, the mud floods are there. So, that means the whole coast is not sandy or as clean as we have discussed so far. So, some patches are there which are muddy in nature. What is their characteristics of this muddy coast, how this muddy coast are generated and how they can be managed. So, once we say a muddy coast that means it always comes in our mind that it should be a calm and quiet condition relative to other part of this coast. It should be a low energy conditions, not water is not vibrant. Okay. So, that means this mod has to deposit it. Mod means it is clay sized particles, silt and clay sized particle together it is called mod. So, this clay sized and silt sized particle settle down slowly from suspend, suspension as they carried out by littoral currents and suspended loads. So, the suspension of clay it take lots of time. We have Stokes law of separation of sand sealed clay in laboratory. So, you can see there that this clay takes maximum time to settle down in a particular temperature conditions. So, here the sea water is unlike river or fine sediment flocculate into loose large aggregates and settle out suspension in quiet water. So, we have clay particles, clays are charged particles. Mm. So, these are together combined and finally, size increase their size and flocculates and uh, they settle down at the bottom of the sediment. If you see here, this is the mud flat. Now, you see here this area or this one, this is open sea and it is mostly it is sand. It here this tide tidal action is there. So, you are getting this herringbone type of cross weddings or cross stratification. So, this is dominated by tide and this is this green area, this green area are the mud flats. So, if you see here 
within this mod plots these are the bioservated zones and this mod within that mod there are lenses of sand. So, um, some pleasure bedding is there, some lenticular bedding is there. So, here these are we are find we are getting some lenticles of sand within this uh, mod. So, it is lenticular bedding is there. So, this gray color this is totally representing this mod and this is sand and these are bioservated zones and mod plots they are very good for uh, biological growth. Uh, some animals they are particular animals they are there they are fed on this mod they are fed on the organic matter associated with the mod. Okay. So, that is why in this mod plots not only this mechanical system this settling down of this uh, clay particles that contribute for uh, aggradation sediment deposition, but also the organic influence is there. These organisms also contribute to uh, create some types of mod some excreta organic excreta that is also contribute significantly, significantly to create sediments in basin within the basin they create sediments and finally, the mod plots is aggraded. So, mod in suspension that is carried out beyond the null line is lost to the deep ocean floor. So, null line we know it is the line in an imaginary line which is defining the sand to move either coastward or seaward. So, this this line beyond that if mod is transported by these tides. So, that will go into the deeper part of this ocean, but the deeper part of the ocean to settle down mod it takes hundreds of years because of this suppose for example, if we take 4.5 kilometer is the general depth of the ocean for example. So, up to this 4.5 kilometer to settle down it will take thousands or hundreds of years, but much of the mud is steered up into the shore zone or carried there by the river moves landward into the estuary, bays, lagoon and other shallow quiet waters environment. So, now you see here we have distributing mud into two different parts. One part of this mud we are taking beyond the null line and we are settling down within that uh, deep ocean basin. And part of this mod we are steering it up due to this wave action due to tides and at taking towards the coast while depositing at the river mouth, depositing in estuaries, then the lagoons, the tidal plots, the mud plots in those areas we are depositing there. So, this tidal and ebb flow which might be thought to be the comparable to a river that symmetrically reverse direction every 6 hour actually cause the net shoreward transfer of mud. So, we know that this tides for every 6 hours we have nip tides, we have ip tides. So, this type of tides, so every 6 hour it is reversing its direction. So, this uh, at one time it is coming towards the coast at another time it is going beyond the coast or far from this coast. So, that means you can see compare this system as a river system which is uh, reversing its current at a different time scales in a different opposite directions. So, by this way mod on the shoreward shallow edge of this flood tide reaches the bottom and coerce and resisting current erosion of the on the eave or the outward tide. It is very important to understand here. Suppose this due to this high tide during high tide the mod is coming towards the shore zone and it is filled with the lagoon, it is estuarine or whatever this shallow water environment is there, restricted environment is there. Once it settles down to the bottom, its adhesive power increases. And we remember when we are talking about this uh, uh, grain size and this uh, erosion transportation deposition scale, the energy of this wave or energy of the current is required to pick up a pebble is similar to this energy equal uh, responsible or required to pick up a clay particle from this bottom. So, that means, once this clay is settled down, so it is difficult to again it to steer it up. So, that is why that that is why at the shallow levels at this uh, lagoons and this estuaries, once the 
clay is settled down at the bottom they remain there. So, once they remain there this clay thickness gradually increases. So, that is why once it settles down it coheres and it resisting current erosion of this eave or outward tides. So, here tidal floods if you see tidal floods are formed when mud is deposited by tides or rivers. Tidal floods are the border of lagoons and estuaries of the environment. Tidal floods are areas of low relief caught by meandering a tidal channel. Laminated or rippled clay silt and fine sand may be deposited in the tidal flood. These are the characteristics of tidal flood that mostly we are getting the fine grained material silt and clay. Similarly, in this figure if you see here the within the coastal inlet, tidal inlet, this tide during high tide the water is here and finally, this clay has to settle down or the mud has to settle down here. Once it is settling at this bottom that means, a adhesive power it coheres. So, that this power increases and due to this outward tide or the, in the low tide condition that remains there without steering up. But at the same time if you are moving towards this coast or outward to the coast or to the deep sea level this clay are not settled down. So, that again during high tide that will again come to this uh, coastal site and finally, settle down. So, that is why the with more and more tide the clay content the mud content at the tidal flood at this lagoons and finally, increases. Now, here some of this analysis by camp it is settling velocity analysis it will say here we have different size classes gravel, coarse sand, fine sand, shield, clay and colloids and if you see here this colloids and this clay to settle down up to 1 feet. So, 1 feet depth to settle down clay it takes 10 weeks and this colloids it to 20 years for 1 feet of settlement. So, now imagine for every 6 hours we have tidal reversal high tide and low tide. So, even if this clay particle is there it takes 10 weeks to settle down for 1 feet. So, that means, for this 6 hours there will be hardly few centimeter movement is there. So, that means, sand is in suspension condition every time. In. So, that means, due to the suspension condition during high tide the same clay again it comes to the closed and once this depth is less where in the lagoons this um, estuaries they come close to the bottom and imagine at this periphery of this lagoons and the estuary the clay can settle down easily because due to this less depth. So, that means easily it can reach up to this bottom. So, that is why clay will be remain always in the suspension mode and uh, it will settle down near to this uh, lagoons or in the lagoon and this uh, estuaries rather than in the deep sea conditions. So, here however, the end of this ebb tide mud that moves seaward and settles to an equal depth that has not yet reached at the bottom. So, it is carried shoreward again by the next flood tide and again it is enters into the estuary and lagoons and it is settled down. This tendency to move mud into shallow quiet water while waves steer and we know all this mud out of the surf zone explains why the beaches of clean well sorted sands are so commonly backed by intertidal mud flat, tidal marshes and muddy lagoons that is important this is due to natural sorting. So, that means, due to natural sorting at this coast we are getting sand and uh, at this lagoons at this marshes tidal floods we are getting the mud. So, this natural setting is due to this size particle this size fractions and due to the settling velocity and depth because at the same time suppose we are get, getting 6 hours time within 6 hours clay can reach up to this depth, but uh, that means this depth that means at the periphery of this uh, lagoons or this tidal floods or the marshes. But at the same time that this much depth it is nothing with respect to this uh, coast um, the depth of this ocean. So, that means it remain within this water column as suspension. So, during again high tide it comes to this coast. So, accretion on mud flood is not only a mechanical process, but a biological process also. So, as we have discussed earlier the biological process also contribute this uh, 
settlement of this uh, sediment at this coast. So, how it happens so? Many animals borrow in the mud and feed by filtering suspended organic debris out of this over overlying water during tidal submergence. So, some of these organisms tidal like from the micro to macro, some of the organisms they stay in the tidal floods in the marsh and they feed on the mud, they feed on the organic matter which remain within this water, within the muddy water within that. So, those organisms they excrete materials and those excreta if you see here this photographs here this waste product including the mud are the secret are secreted as a facial pellets. So, facial pellets that are hydraulically similar to sand grains except that they are tend to stick together sand grain size. So, this facial pellets the excreta of these organisms they are of mud nature. So, they stick together the sand size particles are there, but they stick together, but sand they do not stick together. So, these facial pellets if you see this figure these are the dots, these dots are the facial pellets. So, these facial pellets they settle down and within this uh, sediment within this lagoons or the, the tidal floods and they contribute to the sedimentation process of this lagoons or the tidal floods. So, these facial pellets of agglutinate, agglutinated mods account for the significant proportion of the total mod flood accumulation. So, both by biological process and both by physical process this sedimentation continues within the tidal flood finally, we are getting a tidal flood of a uh, mod rich environment. So, I think we should stop here. So, thank you very much and we will meet in the next class. Thank you.